Okay, sure. Yeah, so this is, uh, I'm with the California State University, San Bernardino, and um, this is for a social science class, and we're, we've been going over discrimination in uh, various uh, various aspects of life. Um, I kind of wanted to take a different approach. I know, you know, a lot of people are going to do the obvious, um, you know, just uh, racial discrimination and stuff like that, mm-hmm. but uh, I, I've just been noticing over the past um you know, I'd say several years, uh, just, just in, in terms of online, um, a lot of, uh, I guess, discrimination against people that kind of go against the mainstream narrative. Got and, it. uh, I was, I was originally going to do it on discrimination against the conspiratorially minded people, mm-hmm. but, um, there, there's so much, it's so much bigger than that. You know, it's just anything that, that, uh, the sense against uh, the mainstream narrative. So that, that's kind of what my paper is about. Awesome. And um, yeah. So sounds great. Well, hit hit me with your questions. You got it. Yeah. So you've been online promoting flat Earth since 2015, I believe. Is yep. that right? Yep. Okay. Um, so, like, in terms of um, what's changed, what have you noticed over the years from 2015 until now? Uh, in terms of suppression of your content, your your flat Earth content. Yeah, um, it was. It's really interesting you would you would ask that because for the first three years, really, from you know, because I started in February of 2015, uh, from 2015 all the way through 20 most of 2018, we were running unopposed. Nobody was even slowing us down. As a matter of fact, it was the opposite. YouTube was promoting us heavily. I was going through some of my older videos yesterday just, just to look, and, and I remember there's one guy, I, I mirrored his video on my channel to where he was he was not a flat earther. He was just a, another channel, a moderate-sized channel, and he was complaining to people that flat earth just keep getting getting recommended to him constantly, recommended for you, and he was wondering how to get around this because every time he said, no, I'm not interested, no, no I'm uninterested, just waves and waves of flat earth videos kept hitting him. And then it started changing. Um, and I think it, it happened for various reasons. One was we started saturating social media to where they didn't need to promote us anymore. Uh, we all of a sudden started um, getting, you probably heard of the congressional hearings, and maybe we'll talk about that later, where we, the Congress actually, and, and talked to YouTube and said that we were going to be recommended less. We weren't going to be banned like snake oil or false flags or anything like that. And we, well, we haven't, all the, all the main channels are still up there, but we were monetized far uh, less than we were, meaning we weren't being recommended really at all. They were saying recommended less. No, we weren't being recommended at all. Unless you're looking for flat earth specific, specifically, we weren't, we weren't getting out there. So beforehand, if you were l- looking at any conspiracy, we were getting recommended for you. Uh, now, not so much. And, and I, I get it, but at the same time, uh, it was, that's, that's when it started happening. So we were getting recommended less. And also they took down, I want to mention real quick, I know you got a bunch of questions. Um, they took down the scoreboard, which was, you know, search engine 101 is you, you type in anything into a search engine. It says search results equals a number that's, you know, with, with Google or Firefox or whatever you want out there. And that was the same thing with YouTube, uh, especially when they were bought out by Google and somehow for some reason, and I, you know, people say you're delusional. If you think it has something to do with flat earth, it's like, nah, cause it happened right after we did it. Um, we were climbing the charts so far, you know, search results used to equal back in 2015, used to equal about 50,000. That's not just videos. That's all references. And when 20 middle of 2018, I was noticing that eventually we were going to start catching some heavy hitters, you know, like Taylor Swift and Katy Perry and Justin Bieber, you know, those are the only people that were really ahead of us, except for, of course, the closest one to us was Donald Trump, the president. I thought that was really interesting. And I thought, okay, I thought we might catch him by Christmas. And we caught him by the middle of the summer. We had 20.9 million and he had 20.8 million uh, relevant search results, which is a massive increase. I mean, it's, it's more than exponential. And right after that, I had a friend call me up and say, oh yeah, by the way, the scoreboard's down. And I said, oh, why did they try to stunt our numbers? Did they try to reduce our numbers? And they go, no, it's gone. Meaning if you go into YouTube, I challenge you, it's, it's gone. It's been gone for almost, it's coming up on two years now. 
you type in any th any topic into YouTube, uh, you will not get search results anymore. You'll see, you know, the list. You know, they'll recommend stuff for you, but you won't see search yeah. results equals a number. That line has been completely cut out of of the algorithms, and I thought that was interesting. So, anyway. Yeah. So, do you think that uh, you know, from my my thoughts, are that YouTube is just a company? They're out there to make money, and uh, they they could care less. But do you, do you think this is coming basically from the government telling YouTube or, or Google, I guess, what to censor? I or, I think. Or, oh or, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the government has its grimy paws, for lack of a better term, in just about everything. Uh, YouTube is the sure. largest television network in the world. I don't know why more people, I won't even know why they don't advertise it as such, because they are. They have so yeah. much content. That, I mean, seriously, something along the lines of 80 hours of video is being uploaded like every minute. <laughs> I mean, it's wow. you, you. There are lifetimes worth. Now, granted, a lot of that content is, is stuff you're not going to watch. I mean, Netflix is is right now the 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 biggest money maker in in Hollywood and in the industry, but YouTube is massive, and so yeah, the government has influence. And I think it's not what I try to tell people is it's not like they were trying to put the brakes on us, but they were definitely taking their foot off the gas. And I don't, because they didn't need to do it, you know, they didn't need to promote us as heavily anymore. They just didn't. We were everywhere. I mean, I've got 1,500 videos in my channel that have, I mean, so much content that, and so much of it is mirrors from other other people. I mean, the, the amount of celebs mm -hmm. and high profile people that started getting into that was amazing to me. Yeah. I also noticed that on uh, Google, Google Earth, shortly after the congressional hearing, went from a flat map to a circle map. Yeah. So that was, that was kind of interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, they, they do try. Yeah. Uh, so how is how is content that dissents the mainstream narrative treated discriminatorily uh, compared to just you know the the regular YouTube videos? <sighs> I guess well, we've kind of already gone over that. Uh, well, no, it's all right. Um, no, because we can talk. We can. I can kind of generalize it, and that is, it's not just flat Earth. I mean, it, yeah. If it goes against mainstream history, if it's in the history books, and you're going against it, and whatever you're going against points, the, you know, the, the 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 heroes and the villains are not who they say they are. They're different people. In fact, it's a topic I'm going to be talking about next week uh, about, I'm going to be going into just about, you know, one, one liners on just about every conspiracy I can think of and why I believe in them or don't believe in them. And mm -hmm. look, history is written by the winners or Napoleon liked to say history is just lies that are agreed upon. We, the mm -hmm. United States, especially we have the most conspiracies of any country and you got to ask yourself why. And that is because we like to paint ourselves as the good guys. We want to be the white hats. Mm. Everybody does. Nobody wants to be the villain. I mean, I mean, there's some gamers out there that want to be villains. But, I mean, nobody in real life wants to be the villain. And we try to minimize that or change the narrative on just about anything. So if you go against that narrative, you if you talk about the real reason, you know, you want, which is why, like, talking about 9-11 is tough to do uh try to mm. talk about jfk or pearl harbor or every american war ever fought or so on and so on you you don't want to you you you're trying to go against the history books and you're the, at some point you're going to be pushing against directly against the government who has again their fingers in the media um i'll, I'll even go let's take it even further the government, uh, through the media and the education system, a few years back, and a lot of people don't remember this story, they tried to remove several things from the history books so that eventually in another generation, kids wouldn't even know what happened. Um, one was the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. <laughs> they just wanted to remove that. Oh. And that wasn't going to happen because, well, there's a lot of Japanese people in this country. And the second thing they were going to try to remove or minimize entirely was slavery. And it's wow. like, I know I'm going, <laughs> it's like, wow, you know, cause we practice slavery for hundreds of years. People don't remember that. It's like, yeah. you know, they, they think that slavery from so, for some reason was only between like the late 1700s to the middle of the 1800s. Like, no, 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 no. We had slavery right off the bat. <laughs> we, we, we had yeah. it. And yeah. I mean, hell we, we practiced eugenics for God's sakes. Uh, eugenics, That's by the right. way, for people that don't know is the breeding of people. <laughs> 
and you know we we bred people like horses and and so all yeah. of a sudden you want to remove that from the from the from the media it's not good so do yes are they just are uh, anyone that talks about those types of things discriminated against yes uh the congressional hearing for example you cannot if you if if a shooting happens that's that's the big hotness right now that is if there's a main sure. if there's a shooting yeah. you cannot go on youtube anymore and say that was a false flag that was a hoax you can't do that anymore um they, because they yeah. they consider it very with for lack of a better term currently unpatriotic meaning it's too you know you've heard the you know the the, the saying it's too soon <laughs> yeah you, yeah. you if yeah. if a false flag happens or you know if a shooting happens and you come out in 48 hours and say it wasn't real well they're basically saying it's too soon you can't you can't talk about it you may be able to talk about it a year from now you're not talking about it now and uh yeah. so yeah they yeah. will they will come after you uh they will demonetize you at the very least they they there was something that YouTube came out with some years ago called yellow flagging which is okay. th they they won't community guidelines strike you and they won't yeah. copyright ban you, but they'll yellow flag you and say, oh, yeah, by the way, you're not going to monetize it. Now you're saying, well, who cares, right? You know, the truth doesn't have to be monetized. Well, there's a lot of channels out there that, that want to be monetized. And if you do that enough, it's enough negative reinforcement that, that people are like, screw this. I wanted to make money off of YouTube, which is way tougher yeah. than it used to be. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. Next one. Yeah. Just uh, to follow up on that question. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just wanted to mention like trolls online because I've, I mean, I, you know, I think I've ever been online for so long now, at least I have, that you kind of get immune to trolls. But I, I noticed that there's, there's trolls that uh, they comment and I don't know if they're paid to do it or what, but it's like every single day for, for hours a day. Do you, do you notice that? <sighs> I've got mixed feelings about that because yes, okay. of course, if you're if you're gonna do look, if I ran the government or if I ran a special program in the government, yes, of course you're gonna hire people to to work and and do stuff in social media because you can bend the, especially in social media because now you can bend in real time the opinion of demographics. You can sure. um, now with trolls though, with with you know just evil sobs that you you'd rather just run over your car. Um, those guys, there's a lot of trolls out there, just real trolls. There's, an, yeah. and, and I say that only because I've seen it since day one of the internet, meaning the first, I mean, back in the freaking nineties, when we started creating those first online forums and all of a sudden you gave young males, American males, mostly, but, but some British, but definitely English speaking young males the ability to post anything they want anonymously that was very powerful very very powerful for people that you know had a lot of pain in their lives or just had bad childhoods or just were just assholes and they yeah. came out and i mean they were hitting the ground running they attacked immediately it's like sweet i can say any horrible thing i want to anybody i want and there's uh -huh. no repercussions whatsoever <laughs> It's like I'll. I mean, there. Yeah. I mean, these are the people in high school that would love to make everyone cry constantly, but they couldn't because they just get stuffed into lockers or, or thrown into trash cans. But now they can because they can't get caught. And seriously, yeah. if you want to make people cry, if you get off on that, th there is no more fertile ground than YouTube. You can go in there and just sure. light the place up. And there's no. Again, there's no. I mean, you could be reported. I mean, you're dancing kind of a fine line, and and sure, you know, YouTube can can kill your channel, but you can come out and make a new one, and then go after people. It's, sure. There's there's nothing to stop you. So, but but yes, yeah. of, of yes, of course, there are um, government social media agents. Sure, why why not? I mean, I I would do the same damn thing. Anyone would. Any any intelligence group would. Um, but I think they save them for specific things. And uh, going against flat Earth, no, not necessarily. They they don't have to. Uh, I I I have said this since day one, which is I think we've been helped. Uh, if they wanted, if you wanted to shut down flat Earth, you could have done it years ago. You could have stopped us from from getting off the ground. You could have reduced the algorithms to to never recommend us to anybody. And since Google owns YouTube, you you could have killed that search engine. You know, it's the biggest search engine in the world. You could have stunted us there too. Yeah. And they did the opposite. So there you go. Yeah, I, I have a question that relates to that, why I think it's possible that they may have 
perpetuated it, but I'll, I'll get to that later. Okay. So for now, like, what do you, what do you see, uh, what do you expect for the future of, of the internet, basically, in terms of um, these uh, views that dissent narrative? I just, you know, um, uh, feel like it's getting stronger as we go. But. It, it, I think it depends. Well, I can only speak for the United States. I know in other countries they can get, a, yeah. get away with a lot more, um, especially in Asian countries, for whatever reason, they don't seem to push back. I mean, uh, you know, America is built on rebels. Uh, we, you know, we, we tend to push back on just about everything. Uh, I mean, look at the protests that have been happening recently and, and that's over, yeah. that's over something that's not even really directly tied to them. And they're, you know, they're, we're talking billions of dollars in property damage. Um, yeah. do I think, <clears throat> do I think it'll get better? Like, do you know, will it get better or worse? I think it'll, it depends what aspect of it. I think it could get both in, in some, in some ways because, like YouTube, they're trying their best. Here, here's the problem with YouTube, for example. YouTube would love mm -hmm. to censor it and turn it more family-friendly. They would love to go the Disney route. You know, America Online used to be mm -hmm. fairly family-friendly, and Disney sanitizes everything, you know, because they're, you know, their, their primary yeah. market is kids. That's that's what they that's what they do. Everything from the Mouseketeers to every animated movie ever made. I mean, they had to create separate film studios just for the movies that were PG or PG thirteen. Um, most of their stuff is G. Um, but if you do that, here's here's the problem with social media. People in social media are so finicky and so flaky that you don't want. If you're the biggest television network in the world, you really want people to abandon it in mass. They've seen how fast. It can happen. I mean, you, you're probably old enough to remember. MySpace was a thing, <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. My, yeah. MySpace was huge. And then it one day it wasn't. Facebook became the, the, the trendy thing. And, and then people started moving over to Snapchat and Instagram and whatever the hell else is out there. The problem with YouTube, if they censor too much, and they know this, there's they're some, some smart people there, is if they go too far... All it takes is another company to step in. You know, it, there's lots of companies that can just set up a server farm and say, "Oh yeah, you want to use tube." I mean, um, the one of the big things that seduced Joe Rogan away, which didn't get a lot of. The, I was surprised the story didn't get a lot of traction. You know, he was offered somewhere in the lines of almost a hundred million dollars contract to leave YouTube and go to Spotify, and he oh. was more than happy to do it because a lot of his videos were getting yellow flagged. You know, they weren't being monetized. They weren't banning them, but he wasn't going to make any yeah. money off of it. And for him, it's like, what are you talking about? I have a lot of people. You know, you get ba you get paid based yeah. on hits and subs. You know, I don't know how much the comments figure into the into the marketplace. And so if a company wanted to come in like Spotify and say, hey, YouTube's censoring too much. Come over to us. We're not going to censor anything. Now, that would only last for a while. But yeah, you could see this mass exodus. And then you're talking about a huge amount of money. Google is a publicly traded company and you know, right. it's, yeah. it comes down to the money. So they, I, there, I, l let me compare it to one more thing real quick, which is there's a lot of ideas that sound great on paper, but in practical use just don't work because of the money. Um, when the pandemic, <sighs> I even don't even like using that word. When the so-called pandemic came out, <laughs> the, um, uh, the airlines ran a story that said they were going to pull the middle seats out of the planes. And they weren't kidding. Right. They, they were going to pull the middle seats out of the planes. It's like, wow, that seems pretty extreme. I mean, they could do it, and it wouldn't really even cost them much money to do it, although they'd have to find a warehouse to store the seats. And they didn't. <laughs> they, none, of them, none of them pulled out the middle seats. And then they said, oh, we're going to rearrange the seats. Nobody did that. And they said, okay, well, we're just not going to book any middle seats. And they said, well, we're only going to book middle seats uh, from the half, back half of the plane backwards. And in the end, turns out they never changed anything. They just said they were going yeah. to, to make the public feel better and to make their stockholders feel better, like they were being more um, safety conscient, uh, conscious. And that it never happened. It never happened. Nothing. You can, I mean, because it came as like, look, you know, if somebody wants to pay for a middle seat, they're going to take your money. And so, sorry, yeah. that, that, that's my take on that. Yeah. Um, so you personally, how do you think your image as a flat earther and conspiracy theorist online affects your things like your future career opportunities? Obviously, you've, you're, you're going to probably be doing YouTube and, and social media for a long time. But if, if yeah. you weren't doing that, uh, how, how would you feel about that and like your social life? Well, uh... 
and this is a warning to anybody out there. <laughs> If you are getting into flat earth, uh, you better be prepared for the, for the, the backlash. And that is, I have no, well, especially with me, because I'm, there's so, I've, I've done so many interviews and done so much stuff. And, I mean, hell, the Netflix documentary alone. Although the Netflix documentary necessarily wouldn't necessarily hurt my employment chances, but everything else would. So nowadays, if you've got a decent HR person at all, they're going to Google you. And if they Google you and find mm -hmm. flat earth, now it depends on the person. I mean, if they find it kind of funny, it's like, oh, he's probably not serious. Or maybe it's just, if they don't know much about it, then then your your mm -hmm. career opportunities aren't really going to change that much. But if you're really heavy, heavy into it, you know, if you do street activism and stuff like that, uh, it might be tough. Yeah, it would be. Sure. Yeah. For me, I don't, I can't. How could I even begin to go back to normal life even if uh, it, it, it just wouldn't happen i mean one i'm older anyway and honestly after mm -hmm. this year the wouldn't matter the, the job market's just been destroyed yeah. <laughs> there's nothing right. i mean there's the they're not even they're not even giving even coming close to giving you the real numbers of what, what's happening out there but if you let's uh, let's just pretend it was 2019 if it was 2019 yeah it would be very very difficult uh to get into anything because you would be at the mercy of whatever HR person. And not only that, but it's not just the HR, it's whoever's hiring you. If they look you up now, if they find flat earth interesting, oh yeah, they might, they might hire you because they think you're an interesting person. If they don't, right. if, they th if they think that you're just a freaking loon, it's like, oh, good Lord, it's flat earther. Oh yeah, then it's done. It's over. Does that, is that discriminatory? Yeah. Eh, it probably is. But since flat earth has only been, you know, the, this new version of flat earth has only been around five years, there's no laws around it nor are they going to tell you they'll just say oh you're you're just not a good fit um as far as a social life is concerned what's interesting for me is uh when i was out in boulder colorado just doing my own thing and um you know i never got married never had kids uh i never i was in kind of a social exile i wasn't really doing much i really wasn't dating that many people at all and then when i got into flat earth my social life took a huge uptick uh, for yeah. uh, whatever reason, I, I've got some theories on this. One, of course, is that um, you, if you're if you're in the spotlight at all, you are automatically more more interesting, and and so I, I people were drawn, you know, to that to some degree. Mm -hmm. um, you're also because you're also in the spotlight. You 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 project your ideas out there. And people know what you're about. It's kind of like you're, I mean, I never did um, yeah. the, the social dating thing, you know, never did any of those social websites, you know, the, the dating websites. But that's kind of what you did. It's like, you know, I'm, especially with me, I'm putting myself out there. It's like, look, this is what I think. This is my opinion. This is my take on life. And it resonated with, mm -hmm. with a number of people. And so over the last uh, five years, I've, I've really only, did, with the exception of my, my current girlfriend, uh, I've only dated uh, flat Earth women, and they were and they hmm. they were the ones that sought me out, which was interesting. I didn't know who they were, and and uh, they reached out to me, and uh, so that that part's actually fine. Although for other people, yep. uh, you know, you gotta. And I've talked to many of flat Earther, and they all said the same thing. It's like, yeah, in the end, you can only really date a flat Earther, um, right? Because right. it's just too we too much of a paradigm change. Which, which kind of leads me to my next question is someone that's out of the limelight, you know, not obviously you're, you've got a lot of followers and everything, yeah. but just an everyday guy who, who um, comes out as a flat earther. I say comes out because it's, you know, a lot of people are, are, uh, you know, basically closet in terms of flat earth, yeah. if I could put it that way. Yeah. But like, what, what is, what can someone expect if they are, you know, they tell their family and their friends, Hey, look, I think the earth is flat. What can they expect to happen to them from their community? Uh, in the beginning, nothing good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the reason why 90% of our members are still in the flat earth closet is because of that backlash. Um, the holiday season is the worst time for me because I run into all these people that they think they're going to walk into their Thanksgiving or Christmas dinner, or whatever it is, and sit down with their family and just say, oh yeah, by the way, I'm into flat earth now. You don't, they forget 
what it took for them to get to that place. Now, that's that's one of the big drawbacks of getting into flat earth is once you turn that corner, you forget all the time and effort and pain it took you to get your mind around it. And all of a sudden you get huge amounts of confidence and you you think, oh, well, I can convince now that I know I can convince my family in just a couple hours. No, you can't. Yeah, You can't. You absolutely <laughs> cannot. Cannot do it. And I've, I've tried to warn people time and time again. I said, which is literally, it's in the clues. The first rule of Flat Club, which is at a fight club. First rule of Flat Club is you do not talk about Flat Club. You do not go up to your family and just open up with that. You have to feel out your audience. And that's what Fight Club was all about. You have to size up who you're talking to. And you've got to figure out where their head's at before you drop that on them. Because if you drop that on them, it is such a huge paradigm change. You might as well, seriously, it's, you might as well be walking up to them and saying, oh yeah, by the way, I'm pretty sure you're adopted. Because <laughs> depending on who you're talking to, they may not take it so well. And that because right. it, because you're talking about a huge something that they've been they should have known their entire life and they didn't, and when and that's and that's why there's this massive backlash. And so again, uh, the the reason why most people stay in the closet is because it's not because of friends and family even it's because of coworkers, friends and family you can deal okay. with you can kind of shield yourself off. But coworkers you got to go to work, and you got to see them. And they're not going to let you live that down anytime soon. I mean, you want a perfect example? Look at Kyrie Irving. You know, the, the basketball player mm -hmm. that um, initially started out as the Cavaliers and then went to um, uh, Boston. And I think he's with New Jersey now. Um, you know, he thought it was a great idea. Why not? He was super confident. He had won his championship. LeBron James was his best friend. Everything was great. He was flying to the All-Star game. And he's like, yeah, I'm a flat earther. Here's why. Whoa. <laughs> he he had completely forgotten that the journalists have access to him. That's being a sports journalist. You get to go into the locker room anytime you want. And he play, you know, basketball plays 100 games a year. <laughs> Every age. He doesn't want to talk. You know, you're a reporter. I don't want to talk about offense or defense. I want to talk more about flat earth. And they just wore yeah. him down to where, uh, you know, he, he gets criticized a lot for it. And I think he partially regrets doing what he did. Um, you know, he never, yeah. he never backpedaled from it, even though the media light would have liked him. The only thing he apologized for was screwing up the lives of just about every urban science teacher in the country. Because think, right. th think about this, um, here's some unintended backlash. So you're an urban science teacher, you know, teaching the inner city of whatever. And, uh, you're saying, oh yeah, by the way, this is global. All of a sudden a kid in the back raises his hand. It's like, yeah, my man, Kyrie Irving. He makes over $10 million a year. He's got his own shoe commercials. He's got all this stuff. He says it's flat. What do you got? <laughs> you know, and, and it's what's the science teacher going to do? I mean, because money equals credibility in a lot of people's eyes. It's the reason why certain billionaires who, I, who should remain nameless, like, oh, I don't know, uh, Mark Cuban and Elon Musk, you know, they, they get to, or Bill Gates, they get to talk about subjects that have nothing to do with their specialty. Because they're a billionaire. It's like, well, he's got a billion dollars. He had to have done a lot right. It's not, you know, sometimes they just got lucky. They were in the right place at the right time. Plain and simple. So, sorry, I ramble. You bet. That's all right. So, like, in terms of uh, backlash and all that, are, do you notice specific um, cultural or social groups that, that fa would face more backlash than others? And, it, like, what would be what would be a community that, that would get a lot of backlash for someone coming out as a flat earther versus what would be a community where people are pretty accepting of it? Um, it's, ugh, I, I don't want to necessarily compare it to, it. well, you know what, let, let's, it kind of reminds me of the gay community, which is, okay. is something I was going to talk about next week anyway. It was one of the things, like, look, 10% of the population in, in the United States is gay. There's 5% in, or there's, there's half of, half of them are in the closet, half of them are out of the closet. But depending on your profession or demographic, you don't get to come out because the backlash would be too severe. Um, a perfect example would be Hollywood. Uh, the running joke is, is that, uh, I, I love throwing this at producers. I say, um, I say there are no, the, the statement is there's no gay leading men in Hollywood and they laugh and they go, of course there is. <laughs> I go, really? Mm. Who are they? <laughs> and they can't say it out loud. They won't say it out loud because there's a backlash, right? You know, Rock Hudson mm -hmm. went through his entire career. 
uh, you know, from from cradle to grave. Yeah. Did not, you know, it wasn't until after he was dead that people came out. Same thing will happen with other actors. No question. Or, um, like, for example, find me five gay professional football players or basketball players or baseball right, players. Right. Right. You, you won't be able to do it. And that's because the football, the athletes are raised as manly men. You know, you relate, you're, you're, you're put in that profession and you, you, you can't come out. You can't. It is just too dangerous. It's too risky for you. Let's switch over to flat earth. There are certain demographics. Absolutely. You cannot. One is this is science. <laughs> But yes, like right, yeah, that. anything in science groups. So, so anybody that works at the Discovery Channel or National Geographic or Sci-Fi or blah blah blah, the, you can't really talk about it. nobody. We've gotten a lot of subject matter experts that are that have come out. I've got a subject matter um, list of people. Nobody came from aerospace. I've got a number of pilots, but it's tough. Like there, I have a, a pilot that flew for KLM, uh, a woman. You know, flew for years, and she came out, and they immediately benched her. Um, other pilot, other pilots have come out. They don't get as much flack because they privately own their company or they're high enough on the food chain. They can get away with it. Um, it, uh, structural engineer, um, Brian Mullen, who was the, he was the initial co-sponsor of the first conference in Raleigh in North Carolina. And what I didn't realize at the time is that if you get a certificate for something, if you have to get certified, you know, you have to take a test and like for an engineer or a lawyer or a doctor, you are beholden to the yeah. institution of those things. And there are ethics right. boards and somebody called up anonymously and ratted him out and said, oh yeah, by the way, you know, you got one of your structural engineers that's hosting a conference on flat earth. The lawyers mm -hmm. immediately contacted him and said, yeah, you better distance yourself now or if you ever want to work in this field again. And he, you sure. know, to this day, he has not, he has not come back out. I've heard rumors that he might, but he hasn't. Um, same sort of things. Politicians would be, would be tough to do. Um, religion, not as much as you, as you might think the discrimination there, because, because at least half, and it's only because we have the numbers, half of the flat earth community, at least probably even leaning more towards 60%. Um, are hardcore Christians mm. or hardcore religious. At least in the United States, they're, they're mostly Christian, although the other religions do take part. Um, and that is because the first thing they did was they went to their biblical scholars, you know, like Rob Skiba and, and um, Robbie Davidson and all those yeah. guys, and said, hey, what does the Bible say about flat earth? And they came back and said, oh, yeah. Mm. They went through with a fine-tooth comb and said that the Bible is, is a flat earth book and that there's only one verse that even yeah. touches it. However, <clears throat> I wait, wait, before we go on, I know a woman sure, in, Can yeah. I know a woman in Canada who went to a mega church up there. And when they found out she was hosting a flat earth conference in Canada, Calgary, as a matter of fact, um, they asked her to leave the church. Now they can't throw her out because it's a church, but they asked her to leave and it just goes on and on. So yeah, there's, you know, some, some are worse than others. Yeah, I, I was just going to throw in there. I feel like in terms of Christianity, it's it's pretty divided. You know, there there are people that are very passionate that uh, against the flat earth. Yes, you know, and, then, and then some people feel that it is. But, it's uh, it's yeah. I know I know that. Yeah, I think it was, it was a Nate. Uh, Nate Wolf. Um, Wolf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was yeah. A, he was a pastor. Yeah, he got fired. Man. Yeah, he got right, He got right. fired just for um, attending a conference. The, he got fired just yeah. for that. And the, there is literally in the entire King James, there's one verse, literally one verse that even hints about uh, a globe. And, and it's Isaiah 40, 22. He who sitteth on the circle of the earth. Well, circle is not ball. It's not sphere. It's not globe. It's a circle. A dinner plate uh, is a circle. A dining room table is a circle. But there are pastors, a number of pastors out there that, that use that verse like it has veto power over everything else. It's like, it's like, look, it's, it's Isaiah. It's, it's not, it's, and you know, it's they say it has veto power over Genesis over every, you know, and, and everything else leading. I mean, there's huge amounts weighing against it, but they're clinging by their fingertips to Isaiah 40, 22. That's all they've got. Literally, that's all they've got. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, uh, pastors and congregations, they hold on to it because, well, you know, it's, it's a massive paradigm shift. It's huge. Right. 
So do you, do you think flat earth is like in terms of belief? I mean, the way I see it, I, I almost feel it's, a, it's almost like a religious experience, you know, and, and I was just wondering, do you, do you see it more as a political, would it fit into a political belief or a religious belief or a bit of both? Uh, it's, it's definitely more of a religious belief, uh, more than a political belief. Um, and the reason is that I say that is because it is, we use so many religious terms when we're describing flat earth, um, flat earth believers, uh, flat earth curious, um, you know, we talk about faith, leaps of faith, uh, we, and with the, I mean, and of course, because there's so many, uh, religious people involved with it, but it is, it is, it is a belief more than it's a belief system more than anything. Again, even though I, I use kind of legal terms, when I say, can I prove the, the flat earth to you right now without, um, you know, 100%, no. Can I create reasonable doubt to where you have nowhere left to go, you know, but to some sort of flat earth model? You know, can I, can I put, create reasonable doubt in the globe? And yeah, I can. And so, yeah, there's this leap of faith. But people that are that are open-minded enough, people like simple things. And one of the reasons it resonates is because we've created a model of the world that is easier much, much easier to explain than the solar system model. And yeah, and that, that does, you know, constitute some faith and yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, I, I, I'm the same way. Do I absolutely believe it? Yeah, I absolutely do. That's only because I tried to disprove it. The great thing about flat earth and the reason again, why we have such a huge um, retention, you know, there's a 99% chance. Once you get into it, you can't get out of it because you were the one that tore down the globe. I didn't convince you uh, that it was flat. I didn't persuade you that it was flat. I told you to tear down the globe yourself and you did. And then once you were done tearing it down, well, let's say you got disenchanted or your enthusiasm wore off. You can't go back to the globe even if you wanted to, which is why we get that, you know, that red pill, blue pill matrix comparison so often, which is once you're out of the matrix, even if you don't like the world you're now in, you can't go back to the matrix because you were the one that left it voluntarily. And so that's right. so, but yeah, definitely a religious, more of a religious belief than a political belief. Okay. Yeah. That, that's, I was thinking along the same lines and uh, you know, I follow um, politics a lot uh, and not, I'm not a super political person, mm -hmm. but just the trends and the patterns and, and everything. And, I do notice that uh, tech companies like Google and, and all that, they, they seem heavy leaning um, towards the liberal side of things. And uh, I, I just, you know, kind of in the back of my mind, um, you know, flat earth really came out in like when, when Trump was in presidency, the, the right. 2016, 17. Right. And um, do, do you think that they are, you know, Google or who, you know, the, 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 IT giants kind of a thing. Do you think that they're perpetuating this or they did perpetuate it to kind of make certain people look stupid, like i.e. the Republicans or the Christian community? Um, I, it's That's actually not a bad question. and But I don't think so because if you... Look, it's been five years and, and Trump's already you know, bearing down his second term, which I... Other than the country literally burning... You know, more, you know, the protests aren't going to derail it and the, the pandemic's not going to derail it. Um, but if they wanted, what I'm getting at is if they wanted to, to tie, because there, there are a lot of Republicans in the Flyers community, but there's a lot of Democrats too. But the Democrats um, don't generally go to conferences and meetups as much as the Republicans do. The Republicans team tend to be real go getters. You know, they tend to be like, you know, just, well, let's go out there and meet and, and do stuff, you know. Um, if they wanted to tie flat earth strictly to Republicans and or Christians, hardcore Christians, they could have done it a long time ago. Um, the left, because yeah, you're absolutely right. Then the media is now, um, it's part of my thing next week. Um, the media is at least 90% left now, at least. I mean, Fox, sure. is, Fox is the only network <laughs> that's holding on. Uh, and, uh, yeah. and also by the way, that the, there was a real change in 2016 beforehand. And, and you guys can go back and check the record if you want, which is, um, before 2016, before Trump, CNN always sided with the president always, you know, Fox was, right. Fox was Republican. NBC was Democrat. CNN always sided with the president. The president was Democrat, sided with Democrat. The president was George Bush. <laughs> 
has sided with George Bush. But then in 2016, that all changed. We're now CNN. Literally, I have no idea why, but um, why they're not doing this. They should literally run a headline every day that says Trump sucks. Because that's what they're, that's really every story they run. It's like they are doing everything in their power to try to get Trump thrown out of there. And uh, it's so far, no, nothing, nothing's been working. So if, again, if they wanted though to tie us to that, they could have done it. They, they absolutely could have done it a long time okay. ago. And they haven't. You know, you could have said, oh, you know, all Chris, you know, they could have made these huge stories saying that Chris, in fact, I'm really surprised more. I, look, I've talked to a lot of left wing media. Very few have, have ever even brought up the Democrat Republican thing. Now, some of them have brought up the Christian thing, but remember, the media has a tough time doing that because they try, they're the, the left is really big about separating church and state. I have watched media avoid the whole religious side of things just avoid it entirely. And I'm not sure why um, a perfect example of that. Let me real quick, which was when I was down doing the national geographic segment with um, Patricia Steer and Rob Skiba down in Los Angeles. And CBS was there as well. So CBS and national geographic, both film teams, literally, you know, swirling around us running different, different segments. I did the national geographic. Patricia did the CBS. Now, CBS should have gone to Jaron, but Jaron didn't show up. Rob Skiba though was there. You know, Rob Skiba was bi has bigger channels than both of us, and and everyone was everyone there wanted to talk to Rob Skiba. He was mobbed the entire time, and they wouldn't touch him. They wouldn't even look at him. Why? Because he's the biggest Christian advocate. I was talking to some producers recently right. who who were asking about him, and I was really surprised. And I said, "Wow!" And they go, "Why?" And I go. Because you're the first producers that have even asked for him by name to me. And and mm. because they, they try to avoid it. So anyway, so yeah, short short answer, no, because they haven't done it yet. Uh, if they okay. want if they wanted to link us all together, make that big connect the dots, they could have done it years ago. Yeah. Well another another thing I've noticed in kind of the tactics of, of uh you know, the CIA or whatever, you know, the, the how the world runs basically. Mm -hmm. it, there's basically false dichotomies created like um i mean I, I i hate to use the race thing but you know how there's there's so many different races and yet it's always a focus on white and black you know that kind of a thing yeah. but uh, whereas do you, do you think that this is kind of another i guess in, this, in the terms of the question this, the another device to divide people on because we are such a divided country right now um maybe Except, but but the thing is because our membership membership is so much in the closet it, yeah it's very uh, it's an that's an interesting question because yes they are very it, the flat earth is the most polarizing topic of any topic ever ever i mean i've never seen nobody's right. on the fence i mean i and stack that up against anything uh black rights gay rights women's rights abortion stem cell research church versus state stack it up against all those flat earth is definitely more more polarizing but they don't seem to be using using it against because it's 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 strange flat earth is kind of like one of those things in school i've kind of equated to you know the kids that got into like a cool music scene before anybody else did you know like bands right. like people that got oh God, i'm gonna date myself you know like people that were into in excess before they were cool or people that are into u2 before they were cool you know uh, they weren't necessarily made fun of it's like oh they're listening to that alternative music and that's what really flat earth is is this alternative thinking and be and but it's gotten so much traction through so much media now that the people are looking at it now is not even a question of of what is it or why are we talking about this? It's, you know, now people, you know, yes, there's camps. I don't think they're using it to divide us though, uh, because it's, it's already got that built in when you, you know, when you first get into it, remember you're in the minority, um, severely, but then slowly over sure. time you run into more and more people and you realize you really weren't in that, that great a minority. So. Yeah. So th this isn't the first time that flat earth theory has, has been floating around out there. Obviously in, in the past, uh, it's been a pretty big thing. So yeah. how do you see that society's reaction to flat earth is different than in times past? And, and how is it the same? Uh, it's different now because of social media. 
um, meaning I, I've equated it to sort of like software versions. Everybody knows like, you know, the old, the old Flat Earth version, everything before 2015 would have been Flat Earth 1.0. And now sure. we are Flat Earth 2.0, meaning there's been Flat Earth societies out there. I mean, I joined one of the small ones in 2014 just to figure out what the hell was going on and uh, realized they weren't doing anything. They were just stagnant. stagnant. They were just, it was just a list you could put yourself on. Nobody was getting engaged with anything. And then when we started doing stuff, when we started doing experiments and street activism and, and meetups and conferences and, and all the memorabilia, that's when, we're, that's when everything just kind of moved forward into a, a not even a necessary next level, a whole nother tier of, of uh, uh, expression. Meaning there was so many, there's so many things now. You go on the internet, just type in flat earth. Oh my God, where do you want to go? Uh, there's so many different aspects to it, there, it, which is why I really kind of equated it to, to a sort of a metaphorical university, Flat Earth University. There's so many different things you could spend time on in Flat Earth. That's the big difference. You want to attack NASA all day? We got that. Uh, you want to do experiments all day? Take your pick. We're, what experiments you want to do? Long distance photography, lasers, gyros, uh, water level experiments. You just go on and on and on. Um, do you want yeah. to... Uh, do do you want to do street activism? Yeah, pick your pick your country. <laughs> street activism all over the place. Um, and oh, here's here's one more thing that's different that people don't even realize because we're only talking about an, you know the English speaking side. Take flat Earth and convert it into any language, just the words flat Earth, and then put that word those words back into Google and see what happens. It's amazing the amount of. Um, uh, yeah. how things have spread because of social media. I mean, last year, 2019 yeah. was so fun. Um, you know, I did, well, 2020 is just a train wreck. I, I I'll probably just be a write off, but last year, for example, mm -hmm. I did meetups or speaking engagements in what, seven countries. I mean, just, oh, wow. I, countries I had never been to and, and flat earth got mm -hmm. me there. Plus, you know, I did a commercial in Australia and, uh, got, I even got to headline the, the, like one of the weirdest things for me was doing when I was doing street activism in, in Lund in UK, you know, just street activism in Belfast and Dublin. And then they flew me over to, uh, to a conference in Stockholm to where I did, um, I opened up the gather festival in 2019 in Stockholm. And I was, and it's not even a flat earth conference. They had me on stage being interviewed by an American journalist. And we talked for an hour. I just, you know, talked about all this stuff. And so, yeah, it, social media has changed everything about it. We knew now we, we it's, it's a community that's all digital. I mean, if the internet goes down, well, everything goes out the window. But by now it's too late. I mean, the word is, has spread everywhere. That's the big difference. Yeah. So, so like when Flatter, I mean, when that was a thing, I don't know the history of it, but it kind of went away, right? Because science, you know, uh, apparently had proven that the earth was, was round. So why, I, I guess, is it, is it uh, science that is making us take another look at this or why are people, um, I, I, you know, I, I kind of know the answer, but why are people open to it now when they would have been closed to it? Uh, for, for probably, I don't know how, how long. The, the, the big reason is because, because of social media, we've been able to dissect most of the space station stuff and most of the space program stuff. Okay. That, that's the big one. If you think of it this way, before, before we just started doing our stuff in 2015, um, you leaned on the space program. I used this wonderful quote from George Orwell. You probably heard it before, which was, you know, and, and the guy that wrote 1984, he said, you know, you go on anyone on the street and this was in back in 1946. He goes, you ask anybody in the street how they know the world is a globe. And he was talking about basically the responsibility of science, how people just believe science, whatever they tell them. And, right. and they say, he say, how, how do you know it's a globe? And they come back and say, what are you talking about? We know. It's, it's been known for a long time. It's been known for 500 years. And you say, really? How do you know? And then they start getting irritated because all of a sudden they realize, remember, this was 1946. NASA wasn't even founded until 1958. So how did everybody in the world know in 1946 or even 1950 that the world was a globe? It's not that you knew. It's because you were told this. Well, all of a sudden now in 2015, we start telling people, no, it's not, it's flat. Here's why. 
and we give them better reasons to to believe in a flat earth than a globe and and i'm first wanted to say that it's like oh are there holes in the flat earth theory yeah you bet but there's more holes in the globe and that's all it takes that's all it takes it, it's kind of like um <laughs> what's that fun joke um you don't have to be faster than the zombies you just have to be f faster than the slowest person next to you <laughs> Because the zombies are going to eat it. And that's really what it is. I mean, if you treat, um, I call them story boats. If, if the globe is in one boat and the, the flat earth is in another boat um, going across, well, the one with the most holes slows down fastest and, you know, and possibly sinks and the other one makes it farther. And the flat earth is gaining more traction because of that. Uh, the flat earth is easier to sure. understand and people love easy and and people and i get i get pushed back from science like well just because it's easy doesn't mean it's right i go no but it means more people are going to listen to it and that's yeah. what you really need in the you need the majority that's what we're talking that's about anything you know anything it comes yep. down to the majority it comes down to the mob and i said and i even gave gave it away to science i said look unless you come up with a way to explain this universe this just fact name the universe the solar system if you you don't come up with a uh, easier way to explain it you are going to lose this by attrition because we've said look you're freaking in a box you're in a snow globe you're in a, you know you're in a planetarium that's it you don't need you don't need trigonometry or calculus or quantum mechanics or any of that stuff you barely need algebra maybe a little geometry anyway go ahead yeah, no, that's, that's good. And in my paper, I talk about groupthink and, and exactly what you're saying, kind of a mob mentality when it comes to factual things. Oh, yeah. Um, and uh, I, I kind of quoted the term uh, emotional collectivism. Even though we're an individualistic society, there is a collective of uh, especially emotional, you know, things where we react to things in, in certain ways and and so forth. Um, yeah, so that, and, and then... Uh, intellectual intellectual monoculturalism where we're we basically were given one or two choices you know and, and there's nothing beyond that uh, even being looked into yeah. so yeah i i kind of i don't know if it's been talked about but i i kind of had theory um and i, I haven't told talked to anyone about this but of um consciousness inside of consciousness and and my basis for that is like at what point do we, you know, as we, in the goal, if we extend uh, to the edge of the universe or in this, you know, in the flat earth model, you know, what's on the other side, basically? And right. if the answer is nothing, uh, my my thought is, are we just in some mind? Like, are we conscious in ourselves, but uh, God has a superior consciousness that is creating everything? Because if God created the world, you know, there's a lot of people that talk about the simulation theory. Yeah. And it's like, why why would God need to create a computer to create us? Why, why couldn't we just be thoughts in his imagination that have been given the power to think, you know, on our own? Yeah. So. Yeah. And you're, yeah, you're kind of splitting hairs at that point. Uh, and it's been talked about in science sure. fiction, you know, just about every conceivable alternative to existence has been talked about in science fiction at one point or another. Um, one of my favorites, of course, was... Um, a book called Simulcron 3 that uh, back in the 60s, which was initially turned into a movie in Germany called World on a Wire, which was then remade in the 90s uh, called The 13th Floor, uh, which talked about, uh, you know, and, and people, computer guys have known this for years, which is if, you, if once you think about a simulation, is it possible there's a simulation within a simulation and so on and so on, um, right. which is why I don't think we're ever going to reach that stage ourselves because if once you do you know we've all we've been striving for that since minute one once the first computer was built and that is once we create a simulation well then this reality becomes worthless absolutely meaningless so but does that does that Howard discount the fact that we might be in a simulation you know and that god is a programmer because why why wouldn't he be it's like you know people say well no he's sitting on top of a giant pillar of marble and you know lightning bolts kind of like a zeus type thing and it's like nah, you know, we didn't you know, no there's nothing new under the sun um the the two things real quick which i always equate to people say you know say because it's possible we're in a simulation one is yeah the double slit experiment absolutely screams it 
um, that mm -hmm. you know particle and a wave simultaneously, and you say, well, what does that got to do with it? I was going because that's what we started doing in computers without even knowing it. Meaning we conservation of resources. If you're not looking at something in a computer simulation, it doesn't exist. Because why would you draw it if you can't? If you're not looking at it, why would you draw it? It's a waste of resources. Um, yeah. And the other thing, and so it shouldn't be happening in real life. It shouldn't be happening here when that's straight out of the thirteenth floor. And the um, the other thing which I love, which people really should look into, uh, because science figured this one out on their own. Science finds out stuff accidentally, which screws them over constantly, um, which is called neuroscience and free will, which is, you know, they hooked people, electrodes up to people's heads, and, and they had them pick a number on a computer. Now, the computers weren't sophisticated enough to tell them exactly what number they picked, but what was interesting was they could tell exactly, you know, they could tell when they were going to choose the number eight seconds before they chose it. Because that's where they were timing. It's like, oh, think of a number, four, right? I just thought of the number four. Mm. No, you didn't just think of the number four. You thought of it eight seconds ago. And you're thinking that's impossible. Mm. I just thought of it. We can't think of anything beyond conscious thought. Unless, of course, we're talking about predestination. And science hates that word. Because that's why it's called neuroscience right. versus free will. Do you have free will here? Do you know? It's like, well, you appear to have free will because I can make this choice or this choice. Unless, of course, you made those choices in advance and you're just going through the motions which is the, the famous line of the matrix that everybody missed when the Oracle was talking to Neo. And she said, and he goes, it's, he goes, this question. He goes, I can't make that choice. And she goes, you didn't come here to make the choice. You already made it. You're here to understand why you yeah. made it. People completely blew that out. Of the way. They, no one got that. And, and that's what it means. It means that you're just going, you know, you're, you're, it's, is it, I'll take it one step further. And I've said this in various things. Why would you be in something, a real-time interactive simulation, right? Why, why would you be in a virtual simulation or when you could just be in a virtual movie? Something where you set out the path ahead of time, you block off the memory that you made the choices, and then you just go through it. It's, uh, yeah. it's, it's an interesting concept, but I, I do believe in it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I often think about stuff like dreams, like is you know, uh, compared to reality, like what are what are dreams and right. is that just as real as what we are doing now, kind of a thing. Oh yeah, yeah. Why why not? I mean, yeah. there's I mean, I've got my thoughts on that, but it's a whole other conversation for another time. What anything anything else I can do for you? Yeah, Th that's about it for the my paper part of it. Okay. Do, you, do you mind if I keep going? Sure, or? no, whatever, whatever you want. Okay. Yeah, I, I just had a few more questions. I think I sent them to you as well. Yep, but, yep. but I actually, it was it was Rob Skiba that introduced me to you because I was really into the Nephilim and all that, right. and uh, and he just you know totally took a detour with with flat Earth. Yeah. Um, do and, you know Do you know uh, why though? Why he yeah. did it? The the bit one of the one of the big reasons he did it was he had the, some of the people around him were working on similar okay. things like Zen Garcia, a perfect example, you know, Zen okay. Garcia had been working on the yeah. book of Enoch for yes. but yeah. years. And then all of a sudden he looks at flat earth and he goes, that's it. He goes, that's the missing piece. He goes, that's why, that's why what makes yeah. e Enoch relevant. You know, the non canonized Bible, the or, sorry, non canonized book of the Bible that reads like stereo instructions. Uh, would, even, even now it's not an easy read. Um, but you can imagine somebody 400 years ago <laughs> trying to read the book of Enoch. Uh, what, what context could you use now? It's a little, now it seems a lot more relevant. Yeah. So yeah, Rob Skiba, great guy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, totally. And, uh, so, I mean, he, he took a detour and he's, he's kind of, I don't know if he's done with flat earth, but he's kind of gone back to the, you know, stuff and all that. Um, well, are you, are you in this for life or I'm in you, this, uh, I'm this move on to other. Yeah. I'm in this to the end. Rob had, Rob had other projects that were in the works. Uh, one of course being the seed series, yeah. which he's, he's, he's really, really been trying to, to get into. And, and no, he's not done with flat earth, but he's exhausted just about everything that he can do with it. I mean, his website, testing the uh, is the most comprehensive book of the Bible tie in to the flat earth of any any website that's out there um and he did you know speaking i mean i've done i don't know how many conferences and stuff things with him 
to where you know he's got he's done huge presentations on it uh the big one that he did down in um uh north carolina uh just last year where i think he went for like three and a half hours and you know just on nothing but flat earth uh and and tying it to it yeah um for me though uh yeah i'm in it till the end how wherever this whatever the conclusion of this goes i'm in it um because that's how it got okay. that's how it got me I mean, I did not want to do yeah. this. I did not want to be do this at all. And then at one point, I gave up fighting it, I, because the world just kept throwing me stuff and throwing me stuff. And again, my my autobiography, if I ever live long enough to write it, would be called um, unsolicited, because I didn't have right. to, I didn't have to pick up a freaking phone. I was doing things that other yeah. people were just scrambling to try to do. And, you know, the, the, everything from, I mean, the, the first, the obvious things would have been like the coast to coast interview. People try, Rob Skiba yeah. pointed this out to me. He, he's going, how long, how many times do you have to solicit coast to coast before they had you on? And I go, what now? <laughs> I <could> solicit. <laughs> Producers called me and, and literally I remember yeah. it was an embarrassing phone call because she was going, all right. And he goes, blah, blah, blah. You know, she, she goes, I want to have you on the show. She goes, give me your, she goes, what's your book? And I go, I don't have a book. She goes, what's your DVD? I go, I don't have a DVD. And she's getting more and more frustrated. And I go, she goes, what's your website? I go, look, I've been doing this for three months. She goes, she goes, why am I talking to you? And I go, I don't know. You called me. And, and she goes, give me your five minute pitch. And I, I, you know, I hit her with some bullet points. She goes, all right, you're on next week. People don't know how, wow. understand how hard that is to do. Um, you know, the publisher, uh, you know, the, for my books, they, um, you know, called me from England. Said, hey, you want to you want to turn your stuff into you know a book? I'm sure. What do I have to do? Nothing. <laughs> Just send it your transcripts. Uh, the the documentary people that that called me up and, and had me do stuff and, and other things. It just kept whatever's happening in in my life tied to this. It's not me doing it. Something else is is yep. be pushing me through this like an amusement park ride. So what? How sure. how? Unless two, one of two things is going to happen. Either somebody's going to come out and after five years, good luck and say, oh, yeah, here's the definitive proof of, of why it's not flat. And I've already given them the qualifications. And no yeah. one's going to do it. Um, and then the other would be, you know, if, if this if the, you know, the hundredth monkey effect, you know, if more people believe in it, that don't believe in it. And I think it's very, very possible. Yeah. I really, really do, because uh, that's how it happens with everything. Which is once it kind of we'll use, I don't know if you're old enough to remember, um, once a certain number of people were wearing Levi's 501 jeans, everybody started wearing mm -hmm. them. You know, it, 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 okay. it, it just perme per permeated through the whole, yeah. the residue where it's like, it, kind of like, you know, what I, the point where I'm, I'm not old enough to remember when all of a sudden people were wearing bell-bottom jeans. That, yeah. that happens with it. I was the... Uh... I was the baggy jeans. I uh, wear them down to your ankles, kind of the thing. There you go. But no, <laughs> or or or, I, I missed or, or the, <laughs> it's but it's so much faster now. Like when a yeah. certain number of kids said that, oh well, if you're in school, you got to use the iPhone. That's when iPhone had you yeah. know, all of a sudden became an eighty percent market share. <laughs> it's like and, yeah. and it's like okay, yeah. well, it's either iPhone or whatever the others are, but it's it's mostly it's mostly iPhones. So yeah, for me, no, I'm staying with it till the end. Yeah. Well, I like um, kind of what you're saying about being unsolicited. Uh, I remember, you know, Tolstoy had a, he had a belief or whatever, basically that, um, you know, leadership was a product of, of kind of like the zeitgeist of the time, you know, yeah. and when that zeitgeist was strong enough, a leader would emerge and it, it was just like you're, what you're saying, basically unsolicited you know, it was like they were born for that moment, but they didn't necessarily want to do it. It's just that that was what they were given. They yeah. didn't have a choice. Yeah. I, I mean, people in the documentary, <coughs> I felt bad because the director really, he still to this day doesn't think that I believe it. He thinks I'm, I'm, I'm okay. completely in it for the attention, which is why he used that whole mayor of, um, you know, flat earth comment. That, in fact, that was one of the producers. Uh, well, no, it was one of the cameramen that came up with that, that thing. I was like, no. I don't want to do this. It, I really, really don't. I mean, I, I could be calling. I mean, I, you, they just don't, you don't understand unless you're in my shoes. Look, I've never had to pick up a phone and call people and, and do these things. It just keeps happening. Um, and it, that goes against all odds. You don't know how hard it is. I'll, I'll give you a, a quick example. 
the documentary itself, Behind the Curve, right? You don't know how mm. hard it is to get a film made nowadays. You can make a movie. Good luck getting it out anywhere. Um, for the Toronto Film yeah. Festival, where we premiered, there were 3,000 films submitted. 3,000. Out of those, mm. there were, and I had nothing to do with the production of this. Literally not a, not a thing. I'm not even listed as a producer, even though I probably should be, because I've got the, a lot of the people into it. Um, the, um, the, out of the 3,000 submissions, they can only pick 100 right and out of those hundred maybe 10 of them you know you you might you know m might make the top 10 list and we always would not only make the top 10 list and they said well it'll it'll never be bought you know no one will ever purchase it you know it could take two years if ever no one's gonna, you know they had no faith in this thing at all and then amazon picked it up immediately and then itunes picked it up and then netflix mm -hmm. picked it up and then I remember why, you know, a couple of the reviews said, oh, yeah, top 10 movie, not not documentaries, movies to watch this summer. We, and there we were <laughs> right next to Lady Gaga's movie with uh, um, where, where she won the Oscar as, uh, you know, Star is Born, oh. the, the remake of that. And it's like, wow. So, I mean, the, oh. if you believe in fate, if you believe in destiny, if you believe that things happen for a reason. Yeah, there's something going on here. And apparently I'm supposed to be doing this. So I just sit down I, you know, and if the emails come up, it's like, great. I say yes to just about everything I can. And I just roll with it. It's like, you want to go me to go out? I mean, the, the television commercial thing, they call me up 10 days prior. I said, Hey, can you come down to Melbourne? We, we need to shoot a television commercial for our mobile app. Okay. Never, yeah. never did not know who these guys were. And here's the even weirder. When I got down there, I was looking at the call sheet. I was the only person in the building who wasn't an actor. <laughs> that was the other thing. It's like, why? And in fact, I asked him. I'm, in fact, I was the only person without an agent. I still don't have an agent. And I said, why am I here? I go, you could have hired an actor to pretend to be a flat earther. You know why? Because we had flat earthers that worked for the company. We had people there. Yeah, and that's what, yeah, that's what, that's what I wonder about, like in terms of Google and stuff. Um, maybe you're a lot more popular than we're led to believe, you know, or the, the whole movement. Um, like I, even me just doing this interview, I wonder how many fellow students are going to, you know, go on your website or your, sorry, the YouTube. Right. And, uh, like, Oh yeah. Okay. Like, you know, I, I go to that, you know, apart from the class kind of a thing. Um, and I don't know if they suppress views and stuff like that, but I, I I'm the same way. I think that this is a lot bigger than what we're led to believe and, and, you know, you probably do have celebrity status, but uh, um, they're just not letting you know that. Yeah, yeah, it's I probably probably do. It's it's weird because like my channel still hasn't even broken a hundred thousand subs. I've been stuck in the eighties for a while, and I don't know why. I don't really care. I mean, I'm under the radar. I mean, I don't care yeah. if I get the plaque. You know, you get a plaque for a hundred thousand. That's that's your first milestone in YouTube. And it's like I don't really care, but because I because all I really care about is the the numbers for the community. No, they took those away back in 2018, um, but we still, some still squeak out. Um, the numbers that I love so much, you know, people that want to know how many people are in Flat Earth, there's like millions. There are millions and millions of people in Flat Earth. Um, the most notable thing would be the U.gov survey that was done in 2017, which uh, is wonderful, which they, they were, the, it was a UK research group, the um, scientific group, not us. And they asked 10,000 Americans what they thought about flat earth. And as they got younger, it kept, numbers went up to where they went to the lowest demographic that they could talk to, which was 18 to 24. It was a full 33, 34% against the globe. And hmm. that freaked out science. That's when national geographic got involved. That's when some of the other big groups got involved because they're going, because that's way outside the, the normal deviation of any curve. And they didn't know what to do. Sure. And so when I see the numbers, uh, you know, I, I don't care. Yeah, I, I, I don't care about myself. It's like, fine, I get I've gotten to done, do some great things. And, and, you know, I'll set it as as good as an example as I can. But I don't um, uh, let me end it with this, the, the this particular part. Anyway, I don't care. I don't want to be rich or famous. I just want to be right. <laughs> that's that's worth more than sure. to me than just about anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I I think there are people that want that and people that don't. Um, yeah, people that that do just want to be rich and famous. Yeah. But uh, 
Yeah, that's uh, oh, that's good. I, I mean, um, I was I was doing the opposite. I was literally hiding in Boulder, Colorado. I had no <laughs> internet presence whatsoever, and it's like somebody just just ripped me out, uh, you know, from the sidelines and said, "All right, <laughs> we got plans for you." I'm like, okay, I guess. Yeah. So, um, I just got a few more. W- sure. What's what's next for Flat Earth? Um, I there was a huge explosion in seventeen. Actually, I got some stats. It, it grew by like ninety percent yeah. in that year. Yeah. Uh, in seventeen, obviously, shortly after that is when things kind of you know the the censorship kicked in. Yeah. Um, is there anything going on? Like any new tests? Any any new? Uh, data or anything like that um most of the tests i mean people are repeating a lot of the tests there's only so many tests you can do uh the most obvious being long distance photography those the ones um because of nikon and honestly nikon should have sent us a few free cameras by now we bought so many of them (laughs) the um between the p900 and the p1000 most of the tests are long distance photography because they're so easy to do you just find a body of water with a high-end camera well not even a high-end just a camera with a big zoom and zoom in. The HD changed everything there. Um, some people still do lasers. Some people still do balloons. Um, uh, you know, some of my favorites are people that are on planes with infrared filters, daytime infrared filters that are shooting long distance, like Jay Tolan Media. He does some wonderful stuff. Um, we're just kind of waiting for the next big thing right now. Uh, just as far as we, we've, again, we've saturated the market so much. Really, what I'm looking for is in media. I'm looking for media to, you know, provided the world doesn't burn down this year, if if we were allowed to keep going, <laughs> the um, uh, the you know we, you know, producers have been swimming around for several years now, about some sort of reality show, which I think would open it right up. At that point, that's that's all we're missing. We've done just about every periodical, just about every internet channel, just about every u- huge YouTube channel has done something on us, uh, but we haven't done prime time yet we haven't done a, a reality show and why not there are reality shows here's the part that bugs me is producers are scared about this okay so you can do a reality show about bearded guys hunting crocodiles and who are also wife swapping and buying real estate I'm, of course I'm mixing a whole bunch of stuff but we have we have reality shows for literally everything so why not flat earth i mean yeah. it's untapped it's un it's nothing's been trademarked it's even the merchandise hasn't been trademarked it's wide open and yet something's holding them back and i don't know what that is yet uh so right now that's for me that's what that's what i think the next step is going to be for us um i mean i'm not even shy like we were supposed to be on like the 2020 season for the amazing race was just destroyed because of the whole pandemic thing but we were Mm -hmm. slated to be on that they initially for example they wanted to do an amazing race season um, with internet, just internet people like YouTube celebrities, but they couldn't do it because it's a paradox. If you do the show, part of the shooting schedule is they, they make you sign a thing saying you cannot be on the internet at all, including emails. You can't even make phone calls for an entire month. Well, you try to do that to somebody whose entire livelihood is based on the internet. Like, you know, Shane Dawson or um, PewDiePie or one of those guys. They, they'd come back and say, well, okay, how, how much are you going to pay me to not be on the internet? And they said, sorry, we're not. And then the whole thing fell apart. So, sorry, short answer is sure. the, the next big thing for Flat Earth will be um, another mainstream explosion. Uh, the question is how they're going to do it. I, I would think it's going to be a television show. It could be another yeah. documentary. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. Hey, did you, uh, did you do a commentary on the SpaceX this weekend? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we did two of them. You know, we did the first one um, okay. when it got postponed. And then I went and did one. Uh, it was uh, Rose 777 was the channel and it was Jaren and DITRH and Karen B and Russian Vids and me. And, you know, we tried to stretch it out as long as we could. I think we went like an hour, but, you know, all the, the, the dog and pony show was done in the first 20 minutes. Because they was, it was okay. super quick. It was like, okay, rocket going up, uh, booster landing on the raft. We're not going to show the landing. We're just going to show the booster on the raft. Um, the camera angles, we're going to show you know, we're, a lot of jump cut edits. And then that was it. And then we, we commented yeah. on it. It was, it was awful. Um, the, the two jarring things that, that we saw 
were, well, of course, the raft, you know, cutting out. You know, it's like, oh, no signal. And then all of a sudden it's back. But the other thing was the two different camera angles from the thruster. One showed a severe curved Earth and the other showed a flat Earth. So huh. which one okay. was real and which one wasn't? Uh, but no, I, yeah, I, I, I the, sorry, the media for me, it drives me nuts when the media talks about the space program. And again, this is what you get, what you lose in, from generation to generation. They said, oh, it's this historic launch. Kept using that word, historic, historic, historic. It's like, right. what's historic about it? You sent two people to the space station. Um, you're not, you're, no one's gone to the moon since 1972, even by your own account. And so what's historic? Because you've been launching off of Russian airspace for the last nine years and now you're finally going back to florida or is it historic because a private space company who is should be your rival is you're, right. you're letting them use your launch pads it's like why are you letting your rival work with you down at the space center it's not one big happy family uh, spacex is a is is a private company as far as i know well okay maybe not private it's not publicly traded but it doesn't really matter. They're, they're direct competition. They take money away from your budget. If you do things with them, how, you know, how are you justifying $54 million a day if you're using SpaceX to send your people up there? Uh, I, mo right. Most Americans don't even know the space shuttle program. You know, remember space shuttles? That's been gone for at least nine years. Gone. They, they, they do right. not exist. And people, people you, know, you see footage of space shuttles. People, you could tell them, oh, yeah, it happened yesterday. They'd believe it. People believe what's on television just slays me. They cannot think for themselves. Yeah, I saw the the suits, the uh, SpaceX suits, and I thought they looked a lot like, uh, you know, like motorcycle. They suits did, or and and, like a and they <laughs> and they said, by the way, and I I actually starting to believe they said they were pressurized. Now they're not space suits, right? They're just G four suits. Like leather. Yeah. But, but but what killed me was was when you know only like not even not even half a day you know later they show them inside the craft and their spacesuits are completely off they're in their khakis and their t-shirts or i'm sorry their polo shirts and their socks i'm going yeah well, okay I, I appreciate that you know because you want to make sure you blend in with all the khaki polo shirt guys that are in the iss but why'd you have it on in the first place why why why, why does it matter i mean it's, there's there's air in the cabin so, and it's not one of those yeah. pressurized, depressurized cabin type of situations. Why'd you take it off? What, why, 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 in fact, if you took it off, why'd you have it on in the first place? Because it's theater. It's, it's a change of yeah. scenery. It's like, yeah. they don't want to show them in the thing anymore. They want to show them. It's now casual. Here we are relaxed in our polo shirts and our khakis and our socks. No shoes. Nobody ever wears freaking shoes. Why? Yeah. It's, it's, uh, you slip and slide everywhere. Why not wear shoes? Uh, yeah anyway what else anything yeah uh no that's i think that's about it um you know i i was wondering i know that the spacex got pushed off it was on tuesday and got pushed off to the weekend yeah. and, um i was just wondering about like the you know like i was saying i i usually think in terms of politics and past stuff and this weekend was a there's a lot of uh, rioting um from what i saw in the news and just and that was like a kind of a damage control uh, thing to kind of get people's eyes off of that well and, uh, they didn't even have to no 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 don't don't go down that road they've used some things to to cover up other things when it comes to the space program but the writing isn't that the writing's a whole nother animal no. um the writing is yeah. is tied to the the so-called pandemic uh, which is you know and i'm still trying to figure it out exactly it's like okay so you get to implement curfews and martial law every once in a while but I don't sure. I don't know what the overall yeah. goal is because it seems to be, you know, they're fanning. The media is obviously fanning the flames. I mean, hell, find a virus story right now. Remember, the virus was supposed to be wiping everybody yeah. out. And then all, and all of a sudden now, and which is why my thing tomorrow night is about the media. The media is all about the latest tragedy. And they they, right. they realize right. it's, they, it's not tracking. Nobody Nobody wants to hear about the virus anymore. Who cares? It didn't, there's not piles of bodies in the streets. Now we're going to talk about people clashing with, with police and, and rubber bullets and tear gas will always win the ratings battle. Uh, always, 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 you know, unless you're yeah. talking about a plane crash or something like that, which is a whole other thing. Yeah, that's right. 
Well, that that's all I got. Okay. Um, so you, you've uh, you've recorded everything. I did. I did. I'll send you the um, okay. I'll send you the audio as soon as I'm done.